Hey Springs Church, we are about to jump online for our service and we are so excited that you joined us today. You know, we're gonna start with powerful praise and worship, but don't just be a spectator, get involved. You know, when we worship, we are realigning our hearts with God's. We are preparing our heart to receive God's word. So find a place to worship, to give God your praise, your thanks for how good he is to us. After that, we are gonna hear a message that Pastor Leon spoke to our staff. This was our last staff meeting on March 31st, and it is gonna kick you in the butt like it did all of us. It is so good. Well, let's get into some worship this morning. How's everybody doing? Let's all stand up. You guys ready to dance and sing? Gonna make some noise today, a joyful noise. Sing, I was buried. I was buried beneath my shame. And who could carry that kind of a way? It was my tomb. Come on. Till I met you. I was breathing but not alive And all my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you Yeah. 
nothing is impossible with you, God. We thank you for all your goodness and all you do. That with just one word, mountains can be moved. We thank you for the faith that we have in you, Jesus. For the trust that we have in you, God. We'd love to sing your praise. Sing this again. In just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Yeah. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. And just one touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but let's declare this. There's nothing that I God can't do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise a name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Oh, and just one word, you heal what's broken inside me. Thank you, Lord. Just one word, you revive and you revive every dream. Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. Yes. There's nothing that our God can't do. Sing it out. There's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise and let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Come on, we declare, sing it out. I will believe for greater, for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree, cause there's no power like the power of Jesus. Yeah. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, and let all agree that there's no power like this power. There's nothing that a God can do. There's not a mountain that Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that, there's nothing that Jesus can do. Oh, there's nothing that our God can do. There's not a prison wall he can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do.
Come on, clap like this. Everybody. Yeah. All right. Will we worship? We're going to see that darkness tremble. Amen. Come on, everyone. Let our hallelujahs rise.
powerful worship. You know, worshiping just ushers us back into God's presence. He never leaves us, but sometimes we change our focus and we take it off of Him. And it's so important that we continue to refocus our eyes on Jesus. He is the one that changes everything, who empowers us, who loves us, and gives us strength to walk through whatever we're walking through. You know, I want to encourage you, we're not meeting within the four walls of church right now, but we are meeting online. And one of the biggest blessings about our church is the community. And we want to build that community here for you so that you don't feel alone. So engage in this service, comment, tell us what you're loving about what you're hearing, because others are going to be encouraged by your words as well. So engage with us on the comments below. We want to hear from you. Also, if you are going through something, and all of us are, but you need prayer, you want to talk to a pastor, we are still here for you. Email us at prayerandpraise at springschurch.com and we will get connected with you and be praying with you. And we are here and in this all together, so never shy away. We want to be there for you. Well, Pastor Leon is giving us a message from our last staff meeting on March 31st, and it is an amazing word. It encouraged us. It reminded us to wake up because God has given us the tools to handle crisis, but are we using those tools? So let this word encourage you. Father, guide us today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for every staff member across, Father, the organizations that are Springs. We thank you for the opportunity. We thank you, Father, for what is going on in the spirit and what's going on in the flesh here in this world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God has always had a people who get up and when there's storms blowing, they do great things. They're listed in Hebrews in the Hall of Faith. How many know there's a whole bunch of other people who are on the spiritual junk heap all through the Bible? Tells their stories that they... Basically, what they do is they don't respond in faith. They don't get up and believe God, that God is bigger than the storm. They don't believe that things are going to be okay. And I love the chapter of the Hall of Faith because it starts talking about the great men and the great women who subdued kingdoms, shut their mouths of lions. And it just shows you that regardless of what came at them, that there was a response that came out of their spirit. And you need to know here at Springs that this is what Springs was made for. Ships weren't made for the harbor. We got tugboats for that. This is not a tugboat. This is a ship. And ships are meant for the open waves. Ships are meant for the ocean. And there are storms on the ocean and they're meant to handle them. We didn't put this church together just to be some kind of a marketing uh, thing so that we could have, you know, more marketing than product. We're marketing something we believe in. We're out there sharing that Jesus is Lord, that prayer works, that faith is how you overcome this world. This is who we are. This is what we do. So this is not the time for you internally to be cowering in fear or worried. Are we going to use wisdom? Wisdom? Absolutely, we're going to use wisdom. But in the midst of using wisdom, uh, we are going to rise up and we're going to make a difference in the lives of the people that God's entrusted to us, uh, to the church here at Springs, to the Miracle Channel family that we lead as well as a church that is really across the nation and around the world. And so everything that we do needs to recognize the church isn't a tugboat. We get out of the harbor, we go out into the seas, we get out into the waves, the rollers, uh, we face stuff and we go out and we're not a cruise ship. I know some people think so, we're just a cruise ship. We all have wonderful jobs in beautiful buildings flying around to conferences. That's a cruise ship. This, this is a war ship. A war ship goes into the battle when all the cruise ships are heading for harbor. And so regardless of what we do and how we respond to this, we make the decision that when the dust is cleared and the smoke is cleared, springs will be doing things that the world will be encouraged by. We're going to bring Jesus to them. We're going to bring a spirit of faith. It's a great time for the nation to recognize, guess what? Your career can end in a week. Guess what? Don't get your, uh, all your faith in the government. Well, I think we forgot that quite a while ago, but uh, don't get your faith in finances and careers. Don't think you're so smart that you'll outthink everybody else out there. We have our faith in Jesus Christ. We have our faith in this, that the world has a purpose. The world 
world has a cause. I'm getting questions from pastors and leaders like, you know, where do you think this fits into Revelation? I says, I really don't care. All I know is just another storm. It's going to blow over. And when it blows over, we're going to continue to win the lost and reach people for Jesus Christ and do what we do. Or we can curl up into a ball, suck our thumb, and uh, just expect things to go bad. But that's not who we are. And so right out of the gate, we need to decide, what are we? Who are we? Uh, you know, when they talk about some of the great heroes, even of today's world, how, you know, that uh, in the midst of whatever storm, there's always somebody who's a first responder going the opposite direction of the crowd. The crowd's all screaming and running for help. And in the midst of there somewhere, someone, whether it's police, fire, or who it is, someone's going the opposite direction against the flow. They speak different. They talk different. They're equipped different. They've got breathers and respirators and, and uh, crowbars. Because why? Because they're going in to help. And so, yes, we're going to obey our government. We're going to uh, do all that we need to do to help this thing, whatever they call it, the pandemic. Uh, but we're not on the inside going to be led by this. James teaches us that when there's a storm hitting a ship, the storm does not decide where the ship goes. The rudder decides where the ship goes. And the rudder is the confessions of faith, not empty, useless confessions, you know, but the confessions of faith that come out of our mouth is what James is speaking about, is saying, hey, this is who we are, and here's where we're going. Where we're going, we'll still be standing. We'll still be here, and we'll be further down the road. And if we have to go back in the slingshot of God, and it looks like things are going backwards because we're not having uh, courses and we're not having services, guess what? When that thing gets released, we're simply going to blast further ahead than in what God has called us to. God is the one who decided Springs Team. Hello. Okay, I am so honored that he picked me to be on the Springs team. I'm so honored that he picked me to lead here and to be your leader. I'm honored what God has assigned to us, what God has given to us. If God gives you, uh, you know, a torch, there's what he gives you is a key to what you're going to do with it. If he hands you a scalpel, there's a key to what he's going to train you in and what you're going to do with it. If he hands you a backpack, it's not hard to figure out what God wants you to do. Pick it up, put it on, and carry it. What has God given us here? He's given us buildings and lands and television stations and talented people who can sing and preach and pray and, and digital and, and all the rest. Television, what have we got? What has God entrusted with us? We can't go to heaven and say, well, we just didn't know what to do. God's going to say, what do you think you're supposed to do when you've got a television station? Television station it. <laughs> what do you think you're supposed to do when you've got television cameras? Television camera it. What do you think you're supposed to do if we've collected singers and speakers and preachers and count? But we use it. And so I want to just challenge you and encourage you that I'm not concerned. I'm not sitting around going, I'm just trying to think of all the unique ways we can of reaching out. And even if they're not unique, then we will faithfully reach out and we will minister to the people of Chosen Springs as their church. And so I really want to encourage you with that. Let's, let's not think for a minute that things are going backwards. Nowhere in the Bible did anything ever last. Nothing ever lasts, okay? It, uh, it's like a good bowel movement. It'll pass. It, uh, so don't allow anything the enemy puts in your mind to make you feel like, oh boy, you know, this, do you think Jesus is coming back? Yeah. Do you think today? No. You know, about four generations down, we might get close to our goal. So let's just get up and go for it. And while everyone else is preaching on trumpets and horsemen and apocalypse and how bad it is, it was way worse about 40 different times just in the last 200 years. So this is nothing compared to those. I'm not demeaning it or making it small, but in a way I am. I'm saying the 10 spies who came back from the promised land, uh, they both said the same thing. Beautiful country, amazing things, big grapes, big crops, big cows, uh, lots of milk, lots of honey. And then the 10 went off and we can't do it. And the two said, ah, what are you talking about? Let's go in there and take it. The issue isn't that we don't see the problems. You know, even uh, Joshua and uh, Caleb said the giants are huge. They're big, but they didn't say we couldn't take them. And so we're not saying we deny COVID-19. We're not saying we deny uh, the things. No, I sat for two, three weeks with Sally and our family watching one of our family die, her sister. It wasn't COVID-19, but it was uh, influenza A. And so we're not, we know life is very real. We also know heaven's real. We also know. So there's no fear in us of death. You know, even if this was the end of the world, guess what this meeting would be about? We're going to go out there and win souls till the trumpet blows or Jesus takes us home. Uh, that's who we are. It's what we do. It's what you signed up for. If you 
you signed up for a cruise ship, you're going to have a rude awakening, I guess. Uh, we're a warship. We are here winning souls for Jesus Christ. We are here saying that we're going to go and do things. We're going to say, God, use me. And you can't use somebody with a spirit of fear. You take them out of it. Remember when, uh, well, you can pick your, take your pick of it, the stories in the Old Testament of when people got afraid, they'd always take them out of the battle. Go home. Go home and be with your wife. Uh, go and be with your kids. Why? We don't want you in the front. Why? Because you're going to run. You're going to be afraid. You're going to spread a spirit of fear. And it says very clearly in James 1.7, uh, Timothy 1.7, that we don't have the spirit of fear. We have the spirit of power. And we have the spirit of love. And it's the spirit of love for people. Uh, the only reason I'm pastoring is because God's called me to and I love people. Uh, man, we can do a lot of things with our talents other than just running a church. And, but we're running a church because we love people, because God's called us to be here. We are a team that reaches out and encourages and wins them to Jesus Christ and prays for their sick and, and marries and buries and organizes and et cetera, et cetera. And so all through the word, it's a spirit of fear that we need to be concerned about, nothing else, because everything else bows its name to the name of Jesus. And if you look at the spirit of power, the strength that we have doesn't come from you. I don't have the strength to do this. Um, but when God gives me his strength, as David said, my strength comes from the Lord. This is a spirit of power. And this is something that people need to see on us. This says, I have not the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. We have a spirit of love. What kind of a love? It's the kind of love that really is what drives our faith, because faith worketh by love. We know that God loves us. And so we love people. And uh, the enemy wants you to get focused on your needs, your issues, your concerns, and like everybody else is. And then, well, then who's going to minister to who? And we have the spirit of a sound mind. And this sound mind is literally the mind of Christ. We have feelings like him. We think like him. We believe like him. And so I want to encourage every one of us that, you know, we are doing great. I'm proud of every one of you for all hanging in there and not just hanging in there, but raising up and moving. And let's just take it up another notch. And let's say, okay, God, um, we have a world who they don't know. They, they, they haven't read the playbook like we have. We've already read the end. It says we win. Okay, it's we win. Jesus is going to win. And when he's coming back, you know, get your eyes out of all the left behind books. It's just a bunch of bad doctrine that made a lot of money. That's about it. And uh, so when Jesus comes back, it's going to be a victorious church without spot or wrinkle. When Jesus comes back, we're going to be doing church, not a little faint crew somewhere barely hanging in Jesus. Rescue us from this world of woe. That's no, we're going to make the enemies his footstool. Like, there's just so many things wrong with end times doctrine. So I'm not even looking at that. It's got nothing to do with it. Uh, this is just another storm like we've raised and had to deal with all the other times before. Remember this, that storms speak to you. Goliath is a great example of a storm. And when he was on the other side of the valley, he said, send a man to fight me. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to feed your bodies to the bird. And the Bible says that he used his gods to curse their God. And I want you to remember that, that you know what, um, I love science, I love medicine, I've been involved in it, I have great respect for it, but it is nowhere near my God. And I think when they start saying things and predicting things from their God, uh, that we know that we know a God who is the King of all kings, who is the Lord of all lords. And uh, there's still a lot of things they don't know. So when they start screaming, we're all going to die and everyone's going to do this and look out for that. We go, okay, thank you. And, and you know, and if it's all true in regards to disease, good to know that. You know, want to figure that out and want to use wisdom because we're not a, uh, a crazy group of people. We are a people of faith and faith and wisdom. And, uh, but that giant kept screaming at David. I want you to know, David spoke back. And here's the thing you better understand is that you can't just sit here with your eyes this big going, well, I'll still be standing. Pastor Leon says so. You better know what Jesus says. You better know what the word says. You better know and you better be speaking in your life that when the dust still uh, goes, I'll still be standing and I'll be blessed and my house will be intact and finances will be blessed and health and healing are mine. What's your verbal response? David refused to enter the battle quietly. He entered the battle shouting at the giant the same kind of stuff he was shouting at him. Him. I'm going to, you know, you are an uncircumcised village. I'm going to take off your head and uh, you're dead, man, when I get done with you. And then he just put a stone in his forehead and he, and he did it. And so I'm still declaring like I always have and like you always have that, hey, we win. This is the church of Jesus Christ. We are taking ground. We're taking territory. God keeps opening up new doors to us. And in the middle of this situation, here is where we're going, where we're going to figure out new ways to touch the lives of beautiful, wonderful people. And 
Satan, you know, he, he thinks he's pretty smart. But a lot of times, if you give him enough rope, he keeps hanging himself. You know, like, you do something like this, you just drive everybody towards Jesus. Are you stupid or what? And the church of Jesus Christ just starts picking him up and going after the one that's, that's gone and off. So we are a church, and a church is not a cruise ship. Uh, a church is a war ship. We're not a tugboat. We don't sit in the harbor. We're a huge uh, war line. We go out under the oceans. And yes, rolling waves happen. And yes, stuff goes on. But we're not going to be moved by what we feel. We're not moved by the little bits of pain or worry or fear of the things that go on. Or if anything big goes on, we're still not worried. The Church of Jesus Christ is not our buildings. The Church of Jesus Christ is not our television station. The Church of Jesus Christ is the people. And back when Paul had none of what we have, didn't even have a building, he went and reached the then known world. So we're going to hang on to all the tools he's given us, going to hang on to all the ground we've taken, and we're going to just go do it. Uh, and we're going to do more, and we're going to do greater. So if Apostle Paul, who's our big brother, just like Jesus is our big brother, if he can get out there and do this and be whipped and beaten and have the bones in his feet broken three times, a shipwreck three times, attacked by animals and hung up and killed and raised from the dead and keep going, well, then I'm sure that a, a little flu will uh, not stop us from doing what God has called us to do. And, uh, and remember this, that fear... It's what gives sickness and disease. Even doctors will acknowledge that, a root in our life. Um, but we have not the spirit of fear. We have a spirit of power. You know, it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 11, or I think it's 8, 11, somewhere in there. Didn't write this one down. But it talks about if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, it quickens our mortal body. So remember this as well. Your body was designed as a chemistry lab. It has the ability to keep you in health regardless of any disease on the planet. And back at creation, God didn't go, dang it, I forgot a disease. And I guess the body doesn't have, we're going to have to. No, he didn't. Thank God he's got people out there that can uh, help us figure out how to help people. But when it comes to we the Christian, let's make sure that our first line of defense is that our immune system is touched by the Spirit of God. And if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead and his body was dead three days, it says that it will quicken, and the word quicken means to make alive our mortal bodies. That is not a spiritual verse. This is a verse that says your body should, is the temple of God. It should continue to be healthy, healed, and whole, and strong. So what is the key to all this? It's your mouth. It's what are you saying? Being silent isn't always good. Get up and speak. Let your kids hear you pray with victory. Uh, remember that, you know, it's amazing to me how much many, peop many of people's prayers kill them. Let me show you the truth. A lot of prayers destroying countries, a lot of prayers destroy churches. Let me give you an example of one. Dear God, please help me. You know that the bank wants this thing and they're going to take my house. You know my boss has got me on the list of fire. You know my wife is sick and tired of me coming home with not enough money. Oh God, if you don't help me, I'm going to fail. It's going to fall through. Where are you, God? You know, in my darkest nights, I need you. I'm depressed. I'm down. I don't know what's... See, that's not prayer. Okay, that's not prayer. And some people like to think, well, that's just like the psalmist. Yeah, well, the psalmist is before the cross. And uh, so if you're going to have a, a depression, have that for about 30 seconds and then get over it and move on to what is prayer. Prayer is declaring. Prayer is speaking to mountains. Prayer is, is speaking and deciding the end from the beginning. Prayer is actually prophesying your future. And so if you're not talking, then your brain's going to mess with you. Uh, we have the mind of Christ. We have a body that has been given an immune system, and the spirit of Christ ignites this physical body. And we've got a spirit man that's alive. All three parts of us are designed to be healthy, healed, and whole. So renew your mind with the word, speak it, get up and keep going, uh, have wisdom. But I want to challenge you, get up and talk, get up and speak. If there's one thing I notice when I travel the world and I talk to people in our church, very few people pray the word out loud. They just don't. If you're going to read the word, read it out loud. Why? Because when you read the word out loud, a lot of things happen. It's planting the word in your heart. It's acknowledging the angels because they, they, they obey the voice of God's word. They're ministering servants to the heirs of salvation. I can just think of so many things that speaking God's word, praying God's word out loud. And when you first start it, you know, it feels weird. It feels foreign because, you know, it's, um, I'm doing something that isn't what, really what I believe. And it's like your car. If you put it to 16, it's going to go to 16. If you put it at 25, it's going to go. It doesn't matter what the temperature is on the outside. So when you speak the word of God, you're not a, you are not a thermometer telling people what the temperature is. 
okay, you are a thermostat setting what the temperature is. If I've got the thermostat in one hand and I got a thermometer in the other, uh, it's nice to know what the thermometer says. I'll put it in my mouth and take my temperature. Okay, this is what my body temperature is, and I can even hold it out here, and this is what the house is. But now the thermostat decides what the house is going to be, and that's what your confession is. Keep speaking the word. I'm preaching to the choir, but keep speaking the word. Someone asked me how I'm going to get through it. I said, I've never changed. I just smoke what I sell. And uh, we're all the same. We get up and speak the word. We declare, my family is blessed of the Lord. We declare no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We declare no plagues coming near our dwelling. We declare whatever I put my hand to prospers. We declare the blessing of the Lord makes me rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. We declare that I'm not afraid of the arrow that flies by day or the terror at night. I declare with long life, I'll be satisfied. Like you start speaking the word, like taking a good shower. And uh, your kids need to see you doing it. You need to pray the word at the table. You need to pray with your wife. Anywhere you go, they need to see you praying the word. And uh, someone says, well, you're lying if you don't have it. No, my tongue's a thermostat. It's not a thermometer. Now, I know a lot of people whose tongues are just thermometers. And if everybody here said, say it was 40 below, and everybody here said, well, you know, uh, Pastor, the church has got a lot of thermometers and a lot of thermostats and heating, cooling pumps. Which one should I take home? You'd be a fool to take a thermometer home. Right? I'll take the heating unit with a, thermo with a thermostat because it can actually do something. And so while people are out there praying their thermometer prayers, we'll be praying thermostat prayers. We're setting, we're deciding, we're prophesying, we're speaking to the wind. We're, gee, you know, God said to the prophet, he said, can these dry bones live? And he said, only you know God. And then God didn't make him live. He said, you speak to him. And as he spoke to them, the dry bones came together. I, you know, we know the word. Get, let the word rise up in you and recognize it's God's word. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We're not afraid. And to be afraid doesn't help anyway. It's not going to lengthen your life. It's going to shorten your life. So fear has no good application anywhere. And I'm going to enjoy my life right up to the minute I go to be with Jesus. You know, I... And, I forget the name of the movie, but it's from a famous poet who said, cowards die a thousand lives. Why? Because they're dying every day of some new imaginary illness, a new imaginary foe, a new imaginary storm, a new imaginary problem. The brave, they die but once. And uh, yes, we're all going to die. It's one for one. So get over the fear of death. When we go, we go. Until then, I'm going to really live. I'm going to get up and do things for God. I'm going to get up and, and live like the champions that we are and say, God's made me, created me, designed me for such a time as this. We have not the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen? Well, let's stand together and let's pray. Let's just pray our war cry and declare what we're going to do in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for Springs Church. I thank you, Father, for the school. I thank you, Father, for Miracle Channel. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in every agency and every grouping that you have given us as ministry. And Father, we declare that as we continue to go through this day by day, that Father, the presence of God flows upon us. That Father, every one of us walks in health and victory, no plague comes near our home and no sickness and no disease can touch us. We declare, Father, our immune systems are strong. We declare, Father, that our bodies were designed to walk on this planet and to stay healthy regardless of any disease or sickness or attack. I thank you for the angelic army that protect us physically. I thank you they're encamped around about us, our buildings, our lands. I thank you, Father, any mouth that rises up against the work of God here, we put it down in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for protection upon every one of our people, everybody that calls Springs Church their home, that Father is laboring here, working with us, Father, that I'm their pastor. We just speak life and health and blessing over them. We declare that they're, they're, they're prosperous, that the, that the blessing of the Lord makes them rich and adds no sorrow to it, that no one can steal from them, that, Father, any weapon formed against them won't prosper, any, Father, sword that's raised against them enters the heart of the person coming after them because they're a weapon and no weapon prospers. Father, we thank you right now that, Father, you're going to guide us and lead us, that the greatest time of harvesting is going to happen, Father, in these next few days and weeks, that, Father, what the enemy has meant for harm 
harm that you're going to turn around and it's going to be meant for the glory of God. We pray for other churches. We pray that, Father, you'd raise them up with whatever tools, whatever people, whatever resources they have amalgamated. Father, bless them. Let the church of Jesus Christ, the real church of Jesus Christ, not the religious pain in the butt groups out there that are trying to stop us, but Father, let raise up every life-giving church where Jesus is Lord. We pray right now for our prime minister. We come against any of the lies of the enemy. We pray that everyone that whispers in his ear, everyone that gives him advice, that Father, they'll be from, the, from you. That Father, you, we pray the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ upon him. We declare right now that no weapon formed against his thinking and his understanding will prosper. We declare that you're going to raise up mouths across this nation with a voice of wisdom. We pray, Father, right now that you'd help us financially as a country, that we would stay strong and that our economy will not be destroyed through any of this. You're going to give them creative ideas, witty inventions. I pray for the business people that are across our church. Father, of those working in education, in government, we pray for all of those as first responders, our police officers, our nurses, our doctors, Father, our firemen, paramedics, everybody that has to stay in contact uh, with COVID-19. We just ask for supernatural blessing and protection over them. I pray that they not have a spirit of fear, but they'd have a spirit of power. They'd have a spirit of love and they'd have a spirit of a sound mind. Father, we just speak life. Father, we do not know the future. We do not know the decisions governments are going to make, but we do know this, that Father, we are in your kingdom and that we're following Jesus. And regardless of what goes on, even if a thousand falls at our side and even if 10,000 fall at our right side, Father, it will not come near us. That's a promise we have the right to declare. So we declare it and we take it in the mighty name of Jesus. For all of these staff, I just speak blessings upon them. I just pray, Father, that just an incredible sense of strength and victory from the youngest to the oldest, that our church will look at this. And Father, they'll be a proud to be a part of this team, this team that is serving Jesus Christ and reaching out. So Father, I pray beautiful strength and beautiful sleep. I pray, Father, wisdom for all we do. And we declare that this COVID-19 is destroyed and gone and finished. And we declare every leader around this planet has got wisdom. We pray for Donald Trump because, Father, that man right now is pretty much the, the leader of, of the world when it comes to resources and armies and finances. I just pray wisdom upon him, uh, wisdom upon, Father, uh, what goes on in Russia, in China, in India. We just thank you right now that world affairs are not shifting towards the dark side at all, but that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the greatest days of winning the lost in every country are ahead of us. We declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody in this room who's in agreement shouted amen. 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 What a powerful message from Pastor Leon. Were you encouraged today? Let us know in the comments below. Don't rush off because we've got kids services happening right now. The link will be posted in the comments below. Join us for fun, interactive games and a message that is specifically designed for your child at every age. They are gonna love it. Also, church, I've got some big news, and that is the health department has approved us doing drive-in church tonight at 8.30 p.m., but they've given us some requirements that we must follow if we want to do this event and do it again in the future. So please help us with these requirements. The first, no one can come to our property before 7.30 p.m. While you're on our property, in our vehicles, we must adhere to social distancing. This means no exiting the vehicles, no rolling windows down. Stay in your vehicle at all times. And lastly, that means that our buildings have to be closed and there will be no washrooms at this event. We hope that you can join us at 8.30 and help us follow these requirements from the health department because we want to do drive-in church and see you through our rear view mirrors or our front windows because it is a blessing that we can connect in any way that we can during this time. We'll see you tonight at 8.30 p.m.